Yahweh was shy. That's all praises to the Most High God in the name of His only begotten Son. We are the Israelites that the Bible speak of. First and foremost, we want to say a mighty shalom to the nation of Israel. We're out here to wake up, you Israelites, you so-called Black, Hispanic, and Native Americans. You are the people of the book, God's chosen people, written from Genesis to Revelation. The Lord said he came for you and you only. So we're out here to reach our people, the lost sheep of the house of Israel, to wake our people up in these last days. Let's open up with the book of Colossians chapter 3, starting at verse 16, Yach, and then let's get Matthew chapter 25, starting at verse 14, Baba Kishah. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16 and 17. Let the word of Hamashiach dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and this is why we come out it's to teach and admonish one another okay it's not it's not always going to be an easy task but we have to do this nonetheless we got to make sure that we're getting off our behind and doing the work of the lord we don't have a problem in this society going to our nine to five job we don't have a problem in this society going to school if need be okay we don't have a problem doing the priorities of this world, but we got to make sure that we're doing the priority that God told us to uphold, teaching and admonishing one another. Go ahead. Con. Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Once again, why are, why are we under the curses? Partially is because we're not serving the Father in heaven with gladness of heart. You have a lot of people that got disdain towards the word of God. They don't want governing or instructions over their life. Why? Because they just want to do what they want to do. Like Yahweh said in John the third chapter 18 on down, he said, men love darkness rather than the light because their deeds are evil. This is the condemnation that light has come into the world, but men love darkness rather than the light. Okay. So we got to come back to serving the Father with cheer in our spirit, with joy in our heart. Now, you have to understand that spiritually. It doesn't mean you're not going to have problems. It doesn't mean that when you come to serve the Lord, like everything's just going to be laid out like a red carpet for you. No, you're going to go through trials and tribulations. But if you're walking in the spirit and love with the Lord, you're going to be under the protection of his mighty feathers. Go ahead. Uh, and whatsoever ye do in word or deed, to all in the name of the Lord Yahweh Shai. Right. Giving, giving thanks to Yahweh and the Father by him. So everything we do in word or in deed, do all in the name of Yahweh, giving thanks to him and Yahweh Shai. Honor, praise, and glory to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Huh. In word and in deed, meaning what? All the words that we speak. The Bible says in 1 Peter 4 and 11, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles or the laws of God. That is That should be the conversation that we have with one another. We should be talking and meditating upon the word. In our actions, everything that we do has to coincide with the law, statutes, and commandments. For instance, if God said not to eat abominable foods, how do we give him honor and deed? Is by not eating abominable foods. When he says to not commit adultery, we don't commit adultery. That's giving him honor in our deeds. Okay, we got to give him honor in everything, in word and in deed. Let's get Matthew 25, starting at verse 14. Bob Kishaw. The book of Matthew, chapter 25 and 14. Bring it out. The kingdom, for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country. Now, why does it say the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country? Just real quick before we move on, give me John 14 from the top. Just to touch on what this is saying. A man traveling to a far country. John chapter 14 from the top. Uh, this is the book of John chapter 14. And verse 1. Uh, the words of Yahweh Shai. Let not your heart be troubled. Right? Ye believe in Yahweh, believe also in me. So here it is. Yahweh Shai is talking to the, the disciples. He says, don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let your mind be troubled. Believe in God and believe also in me. Go ahead. In my father's house are many mansions. Right? If it were not so, I would have told you. So in his father's house is many mansions. Now that's a twofold meaning. It's talking about royalty of the kingdom, but it's also talking about you Israelites because we are called the house of Israel. So the mansions that it's also referencing is you Israelites. 
many mansions. Okay, go ahead. I go to prepare a place for you. Come hear the word, brother and sister. Come hear the word. How you doing, sister? You got you got two minutes of your time for the word of God. I gotta get to my baby. I'm sorry. All right. Well, know this, sister. As you go, as you walking or leaving down the street, the so-called Black, Hispanic, and Native Americans, we are the Israelites. God. We must keep the commandments of God and the faith in Christ, sister. All right. Just lock it. We gotta get. It's the book of John, chapter 14, and verse 2. God. In my father's house are many mansions. Right. If it were not so, I would have told you. Mm -hmm. I go to prepare a place for you. So, Yahweh Shai says, I go. I go to prepare a place for you, right? Uh, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Just like it says in Acts, the first chapter, when... He was ascended into heaven. The angels spoke to the men of Galilee and, Galilee and said, "Ye men of Galilee, Galilee, why do you stand here gazing into the clouds? This same uh, Yahushai that you have seen go shall shall return in like manner." So he went to prepare a place for us, but he's coming back to receive his children unto himself. Uh, he's the one that traveled unto a far country, meaning the kingdom of heaven, the third realm, the spiritual realm. Go back to Matthew twenty-five and verse fourteen again, King. The book of Matthew, chapter 25, and verse 14. God. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country. Yahawashai went into that far country, the kingdom of heaven, right? Who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. His what? His, his goods. goods. Delivered unto his servants his goods. So if you got spiritual ears to hear, Yahawashai went back to the Father, but delivered to his servants his goods. Well, what is that going into? Give me the book of Jeremiah 6 and 16. Over here, Israel. Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16, Bob Kesha. Uh, Delivered unto his servants. Well, first of all, who is his servants? The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 9, 1 through 4, in Leviticus 25 and verse 55, that Israel is his servant. Uh, what this is the book of Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16. Uh, Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old path. Right. Where is the good way? Where is the what? Where is the good way? Right. And walk therein. We got to walk in the good way, right? And ye shall find rest for your souls. Uh-huh. But they said, we will not walk therein. But that's the problem with our people. When the Lord tells us to walk in the good way, our people say amongst themselves, we will not walk therein, but we have to walk in the good way. Give me, uh, give me First Timothy one and eight. First Timothy one and verse eight, and then we're gonna grab Romans seven and twelve because he says he delivered the, his goods to his servants. First Timothy chapter one and verse eight. Bible Kesha. This is the book of First Timothy chapter one and verse eight. God. But we know that the law is good. The law is what? The law, the law is, is good. good, right? If a man use it lawfully. But it has to be used lawfully. What's the point in applying the law, statutes, and commandments in a false way? You can't sit there and say to someone, thou shalt not commit adultery, but you sleeping with your brother's wife. You got to use it lawfully. Do it correctly. Go ahead. Verse 9. Verse 9. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, uh -huh. but for the lawless and disobedient. See, that? that's why the law was given, for the lawless and disobedient. To put a mirror up and to, to show our people the dirtiness and the ugliness that we all possess. It helps straighten us out and get us on that correct path, that good way that Jeremiah was talking about. Go ahead. For the ungodly and for sinners. Right? That's why the law was given, for the ungodly and for the sinners. And that goes for all the Israelites, every last one of you. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Go ahead. For unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers. Right. For manslayers. Right. For whoremongers. For them that defile themselves with mankind. Meaning homosexuality, right? For men stealers. Uh huh. Slaves taking taking people captive, right? For liars. Uh huh. For per for perjured. Perjurers, right, right. For perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. To sound doctrine, which is the law, statutes, and commandments, predicated on Proverbs chapter four 
one through two, when he says, I give you good, uh, good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. He says, hearken unto our father. That's what we have to do. So when it talks about the good things, he delivered these good things to his servants. He's meaning the law, statutes, and commandments. Let's verify with one more. Let's get Romans 7 and 12. Romans chapter 7 and verse 12. You got a minute for the word of God? Two minutes of your time for the word of God? Romans 7 and verse 12. This is the book of Romans chapter 7 and verse 12. Wherefore, the law is holy. The law is holy, right? And the commandment holy. Right? And just and good. And what? And good. So the commandment is holy. The law is holy and just and good. Read that again, Brother Israel. This is the book of Matthew 25 and 14. God. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. So he gave his servants the word of God. These are the goods that he delivered unto his servants is, is the word of God. Keep reading. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability. So he gave his servants five, two, and one. He gave them these talents or treasure, if you got understanding. Go ahead. And straightway took his journey. Right. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. So he, he made it bubble, essentially, like God. they say. He doubled his talents. He flipped it and made it double. Meaning what? He went out there and did the work. He wasn't just sleeping on the goods that his master gave him. The Lord is the master in this context, Shai. In the goods are the law, statutes, and commandments, the word of God. Meaning what? When he gave it to his servants, he told them to go multiply, feed my sheep, go out and win souls with this, with this word. That's what the talents represent. Making sure we're reaching one and teaching one. Go ahead. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained another two. Right. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. And hid the money, hid the treasure, right? After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. So this first servant says, you gave me five talents, but behold, I went out and I acquired five more talents. I doubled it. I made it into ten. I, I put the good use, the goods that you gave me. I didn't just mishandle or neglect these goods that you handed to me. Go ahead. His Shalom, Lord, brother. You got a minute for the word of God, brother? Two minutes your time for the word of God, brother? Two minutes? All right, brother. Well, know this, brother. The so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans, we are the Israelites. God. We are God's chosen people, brother. We must keep the commandments of God and the faith in Christ in these last days. All right? All right, Slack King. Go ahead. Book of Matthew, chapter 25 and verse 21. His Lord said unto him, Well done, and thou good and faithful servant. So Yahweh, his Lord, if you got ears to hear, told this brother that had the five talents but multiplied it into ten. He said, Well done, you good and faithful servant. You did what you were supposed to do. You didn't neglect the goods that I gave you. You wasn't just sitting around being idle, doing nothing with these goods. You multiplied them and turned them into ten. Go ahead. Thou good and faithful servant, thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. So he tells him, he says, because you were able to handle a few things, now I'm going to promote you to honor, essentially. I'm going to make you into a position to where you can handle much things. Now, for you Israelites that are idle, that think that you don't have to do this work, and you wonder why you're just not getting nowhere in life. It's because you're not handling the goods that the Lord has given you to multiply, to multiply these talents. Go ahead. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. See, that, that's how you're going to obtain joy. That's why he says, enter into the joy. You got to walk through that, okay? You got to receive it. But the only way you're going to do it is if you are hearkening and applying what the Lord is telling you to do. Keep reading. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord... Thou deliverest unto me two talents. 
Behold, I have gained two other talents besides them. So now here's the one that received the two talents, a bit less than the one who received five, right? He wasn't, maybe he wasn't able to handle as much, but nonetheless, he still did his part. He made sure to go multiply that two into four. Now the one that was, uh, that received five, he had a heavier load, a heavier burden, but he was able to handle that. That's why the master gave him five, and he doubled it. But the one that had two, that was sufficient for him. Let me give you an example. Some brothers, God has given them an extra dose of wisdom. Some brothers, God has given an extra dose of knowledge and understanding, an extra dose of ability. Why? Because they're able to handle it. But some brothers got a little bit less and they can still handle and do the Lord's work, but not as much as maybe the brother that got five. And that's okay because we're one body working together one spirit but the brother with the two talents you don't see that he got jealous over the one with the five no he just went out and did his part and as a result he heard well done you good and faithful servant he didn't bicker and murmur and say well why didn't you give me five okay why didn't you give me five like the other brother no he just went and did what his lord told him to do period yeah. keep reading king Verse 23, and his Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. So he says the same thing to the brother that had two talents. He says, Because you did what you were supposed to do, I'm coming back from this far journey. And now, now that I have returned, I see the fruits that you produced. So guess what? You were able to handle a little. Now I'm going to give you much. Keep reading. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Right, same thing he told the brother with the five talents. Go ahead. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man. So here it is. Now the brother that had received a uh, little, he had one talent, a small responsibility. Okay, a small responsibility. His reply to his Lord, to his master, he said, Lord, I knew thee were a hard man. I knew you were an austere man. Go ahead. Reaping where thou hast not sown, uh -huh. and gathering where thou hast not strived. Questioning and doubting the Lord. Why did you do it? Why are you putting this on me for? Right? Why, why do I got to do it? Okay, go ahead. And I was afraid. And I was afraid. I, I, I doubt it. My faith wasn't there, right? Go ahead. And went and hid thy talent in the earth. Meaning put away the word of God, put it to the side, put it on the back burner. I'm going to do that later. I'm going to do that when I got time. I got other things I got to worry about. My boss at work isn't going to let me have the Sabbath off. You have to understand that. Okay. I don't want to deal with those brothers because those brothers just get on my nerves. Okay. As if you're perfect or something yourself. Like you don't make no mistakes. How you doing? You got a minute for the word of God, man? Nope. All right. Well, notice anyways, the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans, we are the Israelites. Ah. We must keep the commandments and the faith in Christ. If you are any of that, uh, any of those, brothers, because he, he looked like he could be a Native American or Hispanic, possibly. Uh, okay, you see that? But our people are stubborn and stiff-necked, like the Bible says. We are a stiff-necked generation. We got to get this thing right. Read that again, Ox. Lock you. Con, verse 25. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. You see that went and hid the talent in the earth, in the dry places, the places where there's sand, not founded upon the rock, but founded in the dry places, the same places when the spear leaves a man, he goes over dry places, oh. goes over the earth, looking for somewhere to rest. This is that brother. This is the brother that walks away from the faith. This is the brother that had the opportunity to do good with the little that he had, but chose not to do it. He wanted to question and doubt and lack faith, and he only had a small task to multiply one talent, but couldn't do it. Instead, he said, I'm going to get rid of this, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to go hide it. I'm going to go put it to the side. Go ahead. Lo, there thou hast that, uh, Salakia, lo, there thou hast that is thine. Uh -huh. His Lord answered and said unto him, thou wicked and slothful servant. So he tells this brother, he says, thou wicked and slothful servant you are idle you couldn't even handle a little but look at these brothers i put a much heavier burden a much heavier task on them and you couldn't even handle the one 
He says, you wicked and slothful servant. You couldn't even come out to one Sabbath. You couldn't even gather at one feast day. You couldn't spread the gospel to one person. Go ahead. Thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, uh -huh. and gathered where I have not strawed. Right. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchanger. Meaning you knew that I was coming to receive what was mine. You should have went out there and did this work because I was going to return and expect multiply a harvest fruit. If you could understand, uh, go ahead. And then at my coming, I should have received my own with usury, right? With, with much gain, it should have multiplied, right? Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him, which hath 10 talents. You see that? So a brother, this brother that he's talking about, this wicked and slothful servant, he had a dose. He had a little bit of understanding for a second. He had a little bit of wisdom. He was shining for a moment. But the Lord said, since he don't want to do his part genuinely, sincerely, putting his best foot forward, tell you what, take that away from him and give it to the brother that it's going to be good, put to good use with. And anyone who's in management, okay, anyone who has a job where there has to be structure should understand that, okay? Same notion, same concept. If you're not able to handle the small duties, you're not going to be able to handle the big duties. And that's what Yahweh Shai is saying. So he says, get rid of that. Demote that brother. Don't promote him. Demote that brother and take his raise. Take his wages. Take that treasure away from him because he has no care for it. Go ahead. Verse 29. For unto everyone that hath shall be given. For everyone that hath, hath what? Knowledge, wisdom, understanding. Everyone who's going to multiply those talents. They're going to have more. They're going to abound. They're going to grow and receive much from the Lord. Go ahead. And he shall have abundance. Right. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. But the one that has little, because he wasn't able to handle the little that he had, it shall be taken away. If you got spiritual ears to hear, that's talking about knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And that person is going to be cast out in utter darkness. He's going to be in that reprobate mind because he chose not to hearken and do the little bit of work that the Lord put on his plate. Okay. And I just want to make a point. Understand that these are different positions of, of management, essentially. One has to manage five. One has to manage two. One has to manage one. But they all had the same task. Go out there and multiply. Some has a heavier load, and that's fine. Some don't, but still do the work nonetheless. Maybe, maybe you can't read. Maybe you're not a strong reader. Okay. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe the Lord has blessed you with a position of wealth, like uh, Joseph of Arimathea, for instance. Okay. I use this example uh, on a class that I did the other day. Joseph of Arimathea was a wealthy man. Okay? And the Lord used him to be able to take out our Lord and Savior's body off the cross and anoint his body with aloes and, and myrrh and spices for his burial. But that was important to happen for our Savior. Okay, So the Most High used that brother's wealth to do something great for, for the kingdom, for our Savior. But he wasn't out there teaching. Where's the account of Joseph of Arimathea going out and shaking a hand? Where's the account of Joseph of Arimathea going out and spreading the gospel. You don't see that. But his account is listed in the scriptures that he used his wealth for a great reason. So my point is, maybe you're not a strong reader. Maybe you're not a strong speaker. But maybe the Most High God has given you a position to help your brothers, okay, in other ways. Okay, maybe you can be that brother that brings flyers to the camp. Maybe you're that brother that when something is needed to help produce uh, 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 the gospel moving forward, Maybe that's you, okay? You're the brother that can help a brother get a plane ticket to travel for tabernacles or something. I'm just making my new points right now that you can't sleep on those small talents. But if you look at your talent like, I'm just going to bury that and I'm just going to do me. But Matthew, go back to Matthew 25 where we left by, by, by the, the wicked servant. Uh, Matthew 25. Uh, the, 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 not the top of it. Let's, let's, let's go down to, I think it's about verse 20 where he said the, the one that he gave the one talent, 
And uh, he said, you wicked and slothful God. servant. This is the book of Matthew 25 and 24. God. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. Mm -hmm. And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Right, went and hid this treasure. He went and hid this treasure, the, the, this, the, his goods, the, the, the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that the Lord had granted this man to go out and multiply and win souls for him. Go ahead. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. And his Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant. And that's, we don't want to hear that. We don't want to hear you wicked and slothful servant. We want to hear well done, you good and faithful servant. So if we're not multiplying our talents, meaning doing this work genuinely, sincerely, wholeheartedly, that's, what, that's, that's the phrase that a lot of people are going to hear. We don't want to hear that. Go ahead. Thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strawed. Right. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers. Right, you should and, have multiplied this money, right? And then, at my coming, I should have received mine own with usury. With usury, multiplying it, right? Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. Right, so he says, take away from that wicked and slothful servant, the little that he has. That's why when you see people struggling in the world, it seems like they could just never make it. They just go in circles. They just go in a circle. Now, I'm not saying that the, the righteous aren't afflicted because the Bible says there's uh, the afflictions of the righteous are many. Psalms 34, verse 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the point of the matter is the Lord delivered them out of them all. But the wicked is like a revolving door. One problem after another. Divorce, jail, disease broke all kind of madness is happening i know that because i was in the world God. okay we was all in the world at one point there's no true prosperity or success when you're in the world so the little that a person has will be taken away if he's not doing this work that goes for you brothers that first come into this truth and you think that because you say kwam yasharala at a high decimal the first couple months that automatically your, your fate is sealed in the kingdom no we have to endure until the and that's what Yahweh said in Matthew 24, 13. Go ahead. Verse 29. For unto every one that hath shall be given. Right. And he shall have abundance. So those who are, those who have, meaning those who are doing the work and multiplying the talents, you're going to receive more. You're going to be a ruler in the kingdom. Go ahead. But from him that have not shall be taken away even that which he has. Remember, Yahweh said in Matthew 5, uh, verse 17 through 19, he says that there's going to be some that's going to be called the least in the kingdom of heaven, meaning they're going to be spoken of as the least. Okay, go ahead. Verse 30, And cast ye the unprofitable servant unto outer darkness. Right. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. What is that talking about? The lake of fire. For those who want to walk, hey, give me give me Proverbs 21 and 16. Watch this. Proverbs 21 16 before you get to Rock 1 and 25. Proverbs 21 and verse 16. The book of Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 16. God. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding. The man that had the one talent and didn't multiply his talent is the man that wandereth out of the way. Meaning what? He was on the right track for a moment. Okay, that's the parable of the sower as well. But because of the cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches, or whatever the case may be, now you're not rooted and grounded. Now you have wandered out of the way of understanding. God gave you an opportunity. He allotted a measure of faith unto you, and you did nothing with it. And as a result, now you have wandered out of the way. But what's going to happen to that man? He shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Welling and gnashing of teeth. Oh. That's what's going to happen to that brother, that sister. Those who know to do good and are not doing it. Those that want to muzzle themselves when God said, go out there and cry aloud. Wake up your people. Show my people, the house of Israel, their sins. But no, I don't, you know, my job, you know, I, I don't want to lose my job. Oh, you know, my, 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 my wife. My wife at home, you know, she, she's not really on this yet, you know, and it's causing conflict. You know, I, I, I choose my wife. You know, I choose my children. You know, I, I choose this world. They're going to remain in the congregation of the dead. How you doing, man? 
you are good. If you don't mind me asking, uh, what's your ethnicity or your nationality on your father's side? Your race on your father's side? Huh? Well, I understand the human race, but you have a nationality as well. Okay, like, for instance, can you elaborate? North of the hemisphere, so like, like the European Caucasian race? Okay, so our mission is is to reach the, the lost sheep of the House of Israel, which are in fact the so-called Black, Hispanic, and Native Americans, predicated on history, archaeology, but more importantly, prophecy. Christ told us to go to the lost sheep and not to go into the way of the Gentiles. So our mission is to our people. But you have any questions? All right, so we're just going to continue on with our... Sam. Huh? What is sin? No, I'm asking. Do you know what sin is? You don't know? Sure. Let's get First John three and four. Alright, so let's see what sin is. I agree. I agree. There's one that's good, and that's God. Well, the Father in heaven, but yes, I, I, I agree. But out of his own confession, out of Christ's own confession, he said there's none that's good but God. That was his own words. That's Matthew 19 and 16. Yeah, first John 3 4. This is the book of First John, chapter 3 and verse 4. Uh -huh. Whosoever committed sin, whoever committed sin, transgresseth also the law. Transgresseth also the law, right? For sin is the transgression of the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Well, who was the law given to? Israel. That's who uh, the law was given to. So that's why when we came into covenant with the Father, we broke that covenant, and as a result, we're being plagued. So, yeah, Esau is the wicked of the earth. Okay, there, there is no true life in him. Okay, but at the end of the day, the law, statutes, and commandments was given to the nation of Israel, the codified Mosaic law, the covenant that we came into. Now, prior to Moses, the whole world did have laws like homosexuality, not eating blood, keeping the Sabbath day holy. But the covenant, the Mosaic codified law was given to who? Israel. When we came into that blood covenant, there's a distinction. Okay. So uh, let's go back to Matthew 25, King. And uh, you got Sirach 1 and 25. A couple more, brothers, and we're going to close it out. This is the book of Sirach, also known as Ecclesiasticus, chapter 1 and verse 25. Because I just wanted to make the point what that treasure or those talents are that it's talking about that we're supposed to multiply. Go ahead. The parables of knowledge are in the treasures of wisdom. So the treasure that it's talking about is knowledge and wisdom. And what is that? Fear of the Lord and keeping of his commandments. Go ahead. But godliness is an abomination to a sinner. But see, anyone who's in sin, godliness is an abomination to them. But those who are in righteousness, sin is an abomination to them. If you're walking in alignment and in agreement with Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, sin is an abomination. And as it says in Sirach 15 and 3, for we know that God hateth all abomination. Okay? So we got to make sure we hate the evil and love the good, like it says in Amos, the fifth chapter. Okay? Love the good and hate the evil, family. Go back to Matthew 25. Read that far back. Give me Isaiah 45 and 3. Matthew 25 and 30. And cast ye the unprofitable servant unto outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And that's what's coming. For any brother or sister that walks out of the way of understanding, for any brother or sister that doesn't use the gifts that God has given them to the honor, praise, and glory to the Father in heaven, okay, by Hashem Yahweh the Lord said he's going to take the little they have and give it to those who are more genuine and sincere with the talents that was given to them. So this is to encourage my people, to encourage my brothers to stay diligent no matter what we go through no matter if you have problems with your brothers okay when you look at the disciples the disciples have problems with one another weren't uh, they bickering amongst each other and saying who is going to be the greatest in the kingdom uh, right didn't peter deny yahweh shai didn't thomas doubt yahweh shai okay 
We were all messed up. But Yahweh Shah didn't leave us. Okay? He said, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. But if you are that brother that think that your brother is not worthy when he is still striving, just because he slipped on a banana peel, like I always say, that don't make him not worthy to build with. It makes him worthy for admonishment and exhortation. As we all, we all need to be sharpened. Actually, grab that real quick, King. I think it's Proverbs 27 and 17. We don't want to get cast out in utter darkness where there's going to be welling and gnashing of teeth. Now, utter darkness, because the Lord says that the day of the Lord is going to be dark, terrible. The lake of fire, them, them ICBM missiles, and the fire from heaven, that's what's going to happen. And people are going to be cast into it. Go ahead, Ark. The book of Proverbs 27 and 17. Iron sharpeneth iron. Right. So a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. You see that? So when we when we are around each other, how beautiful and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Like it says in Psalms 133, verse 1. Gather yourself together, O nation not desire. Yea, gather together before the decree go forth. Okay? We got to sharpen one another. And sharpening takes work. You got to grind that metal against each other. Okay? And sparks will fly sometimes. It may get heated. It may get hot for a moment. But guess what? You start to sharpen them. Does everyone understand? Ah. But we build with each other. But if you walk away from your brother because he's dull at the moment, you look at him as he's not worth sharpening when the Lord said, no, I came for the lost. I came to give salvation to the sinners, to save the sinners. Con? Con. Uh, I'll pray. Let's get Isaiah 45 and 3. Is it on it? Con. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 3. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness. Right? Now, now it says the treasures of darkness. Okay? Now, that's not talking about uh, evil. It's talking about like dark sayings. Okay? Wisdom and dark sayings like the Bible talks about. Go ahead. And hidden riches of secret places. Now, what? why does it say secret places? Just real quick. Go where you're at. Give me Deuteronomy 29 and 29 one more time. I know we brought it out earlier. Just hold where you guys real fast. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 29, verse 29. God. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, right? But those things which are revealed belong unto us. To the children of Israel, right? And to our children forever. Uh-huh. Watch this. That we may do all the words of this law. Of what now? Of this law. Now, go back to Isaiah 45 and 3. So the treasure that it's talking about, to make it plain, once again, the talents, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Making sure we're abounding in the faith. We're spreading the gospel. We're reaching one and teaching one. Go ahead. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 3. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places mm -hmm. that thou mayest know that i the lord which call thee by thy name am the god of israel is the god of israel i just want to find that scripture real quick where it talks about dark sayings does anyone remember where that's at i think that's in um yeah, i think it's in some there's one in psalms as well let me see just real quick salakia I know there's one that talks about how he'll reveal the dark sayings. But I know, uh. Is it this one? Psalm 780? Yeah, bring, bring that out, Kings. Yep. Yeah, but bring that one out. You know, that, 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 yep. This is the book of Psalm 78, and from the top, Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. Right, so the law, statutes, and commandments again. Give ear to the law, right? I will open my mouth in a parable. Mm -hmm. I will utter dark sayings of old. You see that? So that's the dark that it's talking about. It's not talking about sin, like it talks about in Rock 11 and 16, where sin is equated to darkness. It's a different darkness. It's talking about the secret treasure, okay? The wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that the world can't find or see. The hidden truths that God reveals unto his servants. Go ahead. 
which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. You see, that's so the secret things and the dark parables. That's what Isaiah is talking about in Isaiah 45 and 3. That's the treasure that we have to make sure we're acquiring and multiplying. Exhortation, admonishment, teaching one another through knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And with that, let's grab Matthew 26. Oh, okay. this, is, this is to encourage my beloved brothers and sisters to stay focused, to stay diligent, to not give up. I don't care what we go through. I don't care. The trials and tribulations are to refine us. We are called out of the fiery furnace of affliction. The Bible says, when you come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. The Lord doth scourge them that draw near unto him. So just because we're going through circumstantial struggles, don't give up. Keep pushing. Diamonds and jewels are made out of pressure and heat. Okay? So we got to stay in this walk and allow God to mold us into what we need to be and continue to multiply these treasures. Go ahead, Katie. This is the book of Matthew 26 and 6. God. Now when Yahweh Shai was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation saying, to what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Yahweh Shai understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble ye the woman? For she hath wrought a good work upon me. For ye have the poor always with you, but me ye have not always. For in that she hath poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Verily I say unto you, Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this, that this woman hath done, be told for a memorial of her. And with that, we'd like to give all glory, honor, and praise to Yahweh, Hashem, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, Quam Yasharallah, Quam Yasharallah, Quam Yasharallah. All praises to the Most High God. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right.